Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Neil Arwin Mercado, reporter for Inquiry.net. The coronavirus disease continues to pose its threat to the country. As of April 12, there are over 4,600 confirmed cases in the Philippines, as per the Department of Health. As the government continues to seek ways to address the pandemic, medical professionals are saying that one possible way is for recovered COVID-19 patients to donate plasma. Joining me here today are Dr. May Compamanes, pulmonary consultant of St. Luke's Medical Center, and Dr. Francisco Lopez, hematologist for St. Luke's Medical Center. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Good morning. Neil. How are you doing, Paul? We're doing, We're doing good. good. We're doing well, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's the situation like so far? How how is it being a in the front lines of our battle against uh, coronavirus right now? Okay, so I will answer that question, Neil, because uh, as a pulmonologist, I work with a team of infectious disease specialists, and my pulmonary colleagues, um, among all the nurses and hospital staff, uh, we do take care of these COVID nineteen patients since the start of March. And we're now in the middle of April, and uh, of course, we saw the surge of patients coming in, very critically ill, second, third week of, of end of March. But of course, we still see them coming in. But fortunately, now we see the, the recovered patients. The first wave of critically ill patients and infected patients have somehow recovered. And these are the patients who we are looking at to po possibly uh, help us out with this convalescent plasma project with Dr. Francis Lopez and the other hematol hematologists at St. Luke's. Now, uh, so that is the scenario. We are still battling COVID-19 actively. Uh, I wouldn't say that the number of critically ill patients are going down. The numbers are still up. And we do need to continue looking for new ways to help them. And fortunately, now that the first batch of recovered patients are going home, uh, the, the plasma is one other arm that we can look at to help them recover faster, especially those who are in the ICU, those who are mechanically ventilated or needing uh, extraordinary support. These are the patients who will benefit most from this type of uh, additional intervention. Uh -huh. So I think one thing that a lot of people are very curious about is as frontliners who are directly in contact with COVID-19 patients, uh, any yung mga measures in place to protect yourselves then? Yes, so as long as a patient is already suspected to have the infection from the ER level, everybody is already geared up, and that's what you know about the PPE, the protective equipment, uh, which not only includes the mask, uh, but also everything, the bunny suit, the gloves, the shield, etc. So everybody exercises the same precautionary measures. And I'm happy to say that after a month and a half of exposure, just donning properly and doffing the PPE and doing due diligence with with washing, etc., keeping distancing even within the hospital or outside the hospital, plus of course prayers, we're still fortunately negative. So um, I think that's the the bottom line is to just be more um, more judicious or diligent with all the measures the infectious disease or infection control service is implementing in the hospital to avoid. Um, healthcare workers from getting sick. President Duterte earlier called on uh, recovered COVID-19 patients to donate. So can you explain how it works, uh, how recovered COVID-19 patients can help uh, during these times when there are still a lot of people out there who are uh, infected by the disease? Yeah, uh, thank you, Neil. Um, when a COVID-19 uh, patient uh, has recovered, they develop or they produce antibodies. Uh, these antibodies are the ones that help fight uh, the infection. And um, uh, one of the requirements is that they have to have two negative nasal swabs 
And then after that, we proceed with the other tests, the standard tests like checking for HIV, hepatitis, syphilis, malaria, and other blood tests. And we also check their antibody titer to really check whether they indeed have already the uh, uh, antibodies. And then uh, we wait for a recipient. Uh, and uh, once there is a re recipient who is in need, then we call the donor back and then we... Uh, get their plasma and their plasma is collected through a use of a machine which is called an apheresis machine this is really a cell sorter so it can separate the red cells the plates the white cells and all the blood products and only get the fluid portion of the blood which we call the plasma so now we call it a convalescent plasma because uh it, is, it comes from a patient who recovered from COVID-19 and is rich in antibodies against uh, COVID-19. Uh, this form of uh, therapy is a passive form of therapy is because we are already using the, uh, the antibodies. Um, any donor uh, can donate, uh, maybe up to the age of 65. If somebody who's older than 65, then we have to really screen uh, the donor very well, and it has to be blood type specific. Um, one, one bag is roughly around 500 cc's or half a liter, and that is immediately infused um, to the recipient uh, over one or two hours. By the way, the collection takes roughly an hour or less than an hour uh, from the donor. Uh, so uh, does the donation process still, uh, parang ano lang din siya, no? the process also looks like parang normal blood donation lang din? Well, well partly correct uh, because you're donating, uh, but you were not donating your whole blood. We're just going to collect, well, two, well, two things. Number one, uh, we're just going to collect your plasma. And number two, we're going to use a machine. When you say like a regular blood donation, that means that they will just get the whole blood from uh, the donor and they separate the plasma from the red cells. So that's different. Um, so in the process of using the machine, we can ask the donor if the donor wishes to donate again, the donor can come back after 14 days and mm -hmm. uh, more plasma. Mm -hmm. So before this interview, we were talking about meron na rin kayong napagbigyan. May mga nag-donate na at may mga nabigyan na rin ng mga dinonate na plasma. So what are the results so far? Uh, have they been effective? Um, okay. Partly I'll answer. So it's last Saturday and we really, really thank these donors. No, last Saturday, which was Black Saturday, and now we call it Sabado de Gloria. We had two donors who donated and were, we had two recipients. Yesterday, which was Easter Sunday again, we had two donors uh, or three donors who came and donated. And this morning, we just finished one. So we have a total of uh, uh, five recipients already. Mm -hmm. Maybe Dr. May can expound more on what happened or how are these recipients right now. All right, Neil. Of um, course, based on the previous experience using convalescent plasma in an epidemic like SARS or MERS-CoV in the past, they have been found to be, uh, they have been able to show uh, additional benefit in terms of recovery, in terms of uh, time to extubate patients, uh, symptom improvement. But here we just started over the weekend. Uh, it takes about a week to establish clear clear uh, improvement, but uh, happy to say um, a couple of those who received a convalescent plasma, at least the x-ray results have improved. Um, oxygen status has also somewhat improved, and hopefully we will continue to monitor these patients and see further improvement towards the end of the week from the time they have been given the infusion. And we're also very hopeful, of course. This is just an add-on to whatever else is being given to these patients. The supportive care continues. The other antibiotic treatment is being continued. Dialysis or hemoperfusion is being continued. So it is an add-on to the entire existing regimen. So if it, we find results by the end of the week to be positive, then that's a good thing. We, this will encourage more 
uh, donation, hopefully, and um, and more patients who will accept being recipients of such a treatment. So, uh, mayroon po bang specific requirements for recovered COVID-19 patients who want to donate? Uh, when it comes to, uh, let's say, uh, physical requirements, uh, mayroon bang bukod, mayroon ba silang physical requirements that they have to satisfy before they are allowed to make uh, these donations? I think you know, there's no really physical requirement. It's more of the laboratory requirements, no, and the two negative nasal swabs. That's number one. And then after that, we proceed in checking their antibody titers because uh, sometimes they may have two negative swabs, but they may not have yet the antibody. And so we check the antibody. And once they have uh, the antibodies already, then we proceed with the other tests that I told you, like HIV, the routine tests, hepatitis, malaria, syphilis. We check their CBCs, etc. No, so but it's not really a physical requirement. Now, so far, um, and I don't know how you call them now. But do we call them not only frontliners but superheroes? I mean, the ones that have been donating are actually the doctors who recovered already. You know, so after going through being a uh, being uh, sick with COVID nineteen, now they're the ones even donating you know, their their plasma to help others. You no, know? ironically, you no. Know? Um, yeah, I agree because I was able to speak with a nurse uh, a couple of days ago or maybe a couple of days ago who yeah. donated uh, as well. She recovered from uh, COVID-19 and she donated after she got two negative yeah. tests. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes now to time frame, uh, mayroon po bang re required number of days uh, na dapat masatisfy din yung magdo-donate from the time that they received their second negative test until they are allowed to donate? Are there any requirements that they have to uh, uh, meet? Oh no! Once we have their second, uh, once we have their second negative swab, we immediately check their antibody titers. Mm -hmm. na po as soon yes. as possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, we talked about it. We touched on this earlier. Uh, ano po yung reception so far? Marami po ba Do we think that uh, information dissemination is effective when it comes to urging recovered COVID-19 patients to donate? Um, well, so far we've started, no, and we're using only our, uh, our own patients no, who have recovered, but we want, the, we want this disseminated, and why so we're seeking your help no, uh, in disseminating this information uh, so that there will be more donors who will come and contact us, and you said, and the other institution, which is PGH, uh, to to donate, no. Uh, we've been in touch with Dr. Gap Legaspi, our medical uh, director. Um, Dr. Benjo Campomanes is in touch with uh, Dr. Gap Legaspi, and we're here to help each other out, no. Um, in terms of uh, trying to get donors, also. Mm -hmm. So the the question now is, uh, sa mga negative. Uh, to sa mga recovered COVID-19 patients, uh, how can they donate? Uh, where can they go? Anong institutions yung nag-offer nito so far? Um, as of now, uh, and uh, if there's anybody who will call you later, uh, mm -hmm. uh, please accommodate them. Um, so far, I, I think St. Luke's, uh, Quezon City, Global, and uh, PGH. I am not yet aware of other institutions, but you might receive phone calls from them and kindly correct if I'm wrong, no? Um, yes, they can call our trunk line. Mm -hmm. Any message na lang po for recovered COVID-19 patients who are now interested, uh, maybe call for donations? Um, to all COVID survivors, you are now blessed to have um, recovered and ha are blessed to have superpowers as well because you have now the antibodies to the COVID-19. We're calling on your help to... to to help the other uh, COVID-19 patients still suffering inside the hospital, uh, that if you could share your antibodies with them through this convalescent plasma, then that would be great. And uh, we are trying our best to assist you. Uh, if you are interested, uh, please feel free to contact uh, St. Luke's Medical Center Quezon City or Global City will give you the details uh, later, as well as Philippine General Hospital. Francis? Yeah, um, thank you, Neil, again, for granting us this interview. And um, 
our COVID-19 survivors uh, who are willing to donate um, go an extra mile after your suffering probably from the hospital, uh, please uh, contact us and you can help also others. Mm -hmm. A final message to the public uh, during this uh, pandemic. What can you? What advice can you give to them to avoid, na lang na to also contract the, to also contract the virus. Um, again, I, I I would just I would follow the the strict guidelines given to us. Again, hand washing twenty seconds uh, as frequent as possible. Uh, social or what they call physical distancing, then stay at home. Uh, do not leave your house if it's not necessary. Um, wear a mask. Um, I think that's I, I, that's the only advice I can really give them. Uh, anything else, May? No, I, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Campomanes and Dr. Lopez. Uh, please stay safe. <laughs> uh, you, will, you, you, you have. Madami na po kayo nagagawa for our for the public, for the country, and please stay safe. Everyone, please stay safe as well. Again, this is Neil Arwin Mercado, reporter for Inquirer.net. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.